Hello, this is a Jay the Shark and friends. And Russell. Mm, and Russell podcast. And on today's show, and on today's show, we're talking to the incredible Rebecca Leck. Not only is Rebecca one of the most positive people we've ever had on the show, she might also be the most nuts. Nuts like if you've taken all the squirrels across the whole wide world and counted how many nuts they've buried for winter for the last 10 years. Well, that's how nuts probably Rebecca is. Anyway, Singaporean Rebecca made her way to Phuket for the first stint back in 2004 and then came back again in 2012. From golf membership sales to setting up a wakeboard park to now helping those in need during the lockdown with the community movement hashtag soul food, Rebecca is just plain awesome. Good one, this. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the podcast. So the thing is, right, and to be fair to Rebecca, she was very lov- lovingly <laughs> brought me a coffee, which I thought was very nice. And she did send a message to both of us. Would you like coffee? So I took it up and said, yes, I would like a coffee because it's now half past two. I need coffee. And it's come from this place called Blue House Cafe. Now, have you heard of Blue House Cafe? I'm not, but are we not going to say hello to Rebecca? Have you, have you heard of Blue House Cafe? No, I've never heard of Blue House Cafe. Well, neither had I. So the natural question would be, I wonder where <laughs> Blue House Cafe is, which is what I asked. I said, what oh, did no, I no, say? no, no. It's by the 7-Eleven. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, before we introduce Rebecca, just a quick <laughs> advertising note, Blue House Cafe is next to 7-Eleven. <laughs> no, right across. Right across the street My from 7-Eleven. My moment of right. brilliance. <laughs> I have those moments quite a lot. <laughs> It's the COVID, man, damn it. <laughs> you got to blame everything on COVID. Welcome to the pod. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Leck. Yes. Hello, darling. Hello, Miss so, Jade Shark. Thank you very much for uh, offering to bring us coffees. You, you, you did accept yours, Russell. Yes, I did. I'd have brought you a lemon tea. You didn't want it. No, I don't really drink tea. I'm not a big tea fan. What's wrong what with kind tea? of English person are you? Why no. do you say like that? Oh, are you not English? You're Aussie or what? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you very much yeah. for joining the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the end of Rebecca. <laughs> I've never drunk tea, actually. I've No, I've never been a tea person. So what do you drink? Um, I'm now drinking a lot. Of, I drink Diet Coke because I'm... A that's c- so uh, fake. I know, I'm, <laughs> but my life's fake. Um, I, I Actually, I prefer Pepsi Max then to you know, Diet Coke. You. Actually, yeah, well... Oh, that's just like comparing eating dog shit and cat shit. <laughs> uh, bl- I usually drink black coffee, but I've had enough coffees today, so I'm all good. I'm all good. So that's You've the concept I don't coffee. understand. Too much coffee. I just, I don't. What? I just don't get it. But I do. Yeah. I like that too. Well, there you I go. I shouldn't drink anything past three o'clock. I've been <laughs> staring up the ceiling, so... <laughs> Um, right, so we're here at Canine Point Academy, Russell's new facility. Which is, is, this, your, is this your first time here? Uh, I've been here when it's under construction, yeah, but I've never been in here. Yeah, okay. I'll yeah. take you for a little walk around shortly. Yeah, I came by I to check out the feng shui. Yeah. Because I'm Chinese. I know a lot about feng shui. Well, there we go. Yeah. So you, where are you from originally? Singapore. So you're Singapore. And how long have you been in Phuket for? The first time when I got here was when I was hired to work on a property project, which is the uh, Andara now. So that was in 2004, two and a half months before tsunami. Oh, wow. So that's the first. <laughs> uh, so that's what brought you to Phuket the yeah. first time was this property project. Yeah. I think a lot of people come here. It's either scuba diving, teaching or working in property. Yeah. It was at that time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that dynamics changed slightly now. Yeah. yeah. Moving forward. So why did you want to, where were you at the time? You was in Singapore? Yeah, I was hired from Singapore. So I was brought here to work on this property project at that point in time. Um, it was all this vacation home, a bit of like, t- well, can you say, t- no, it's not timeshare. It's like vacation share or home sharing. It's timeshare. Timeshare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like try not to use that word. <laughs> like what would be a Well, it does, timeshare does have a, I mean, I hate the word timeshare, but I think that just comes from, there are a few companies that made, Timeshare horrible, but actually, vacation the concept is good. 
Huh? The concept is good. The concept's good, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I just think that unfortunately you got that. I'm not going to mention the company name, but they were very aggressive in how they would try to get people to sign up for Timeshare. But I think it's also how the salespeople are put under pressure to close deals, right? Oh, sure. I mean, I've yeah. always been a salesperson, mm. so I understand that they need to do because that's where the money is, right? So, yeah. you, so. where did you grew up in Singapore? Yeah. What was that like? Fantastic, because Singapore you're so cozy. You're like you're so covered, you know. You're you're not exposed to danger on your own. Like when I first got here, yeah. I've got my driving license. So I passed my driving license like after the second try, and the moment I got <laughs> off, so after the second, <laughs> okay, what? the first time I ran over a curb, but that was accident. <laughs> I didn't kill nobody. I didn't kill a cat. <laughs> I was going to say I ran over. I just a turned cat. too early. <laughs> you know, one of those did see clutchy moment again. So then again, the second time, I understood what I had to do. Cause first time was a trial, right? I didn't know what I had to do, so I was a bit nervous, and I kind of like, uh, you know, anticipated a little bit too early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was careful though. Yeah. So then again, um, so I, I got here and I've never driven after I passed my um, driving test, right? Because in Singapore, you get driven by your your family, you that taxi, you know, like such a you good don't need public transport yeah, system. Yeah, and, and it's so expensive to own a car. Like, who wants to own a car? Takes up all it's your like savings. It's the most right? expensive place in the world to own a car. Yeah, exactly. And not just owning a car; it's all the taxes, yeah. the whatever road tax and stuff that you have COA. to pay. Parking, like here, you don't pay a cent for no. parking like there you have to pay for parking you get caught for not putting your ticket and then you get caught for you know not extending your ticket at the appropriate time so there's a lot of stress so anyway when i got here i got off the plane <laughs> you know the person that hired me got somebody to come pick me up and they said okay now drive you know like drive to the work so i'm like no oh. <laughs> shit i haven't driven in five years like but you gotta like pretend that you know what you're doing so then i kind of like maneuver myself out <laughs> of the car park really slowly i thought i was driving so fast and then the guy that was picking me up he kind of looked at me like are you all right because i was driving like 40 kilometers yeah. far. i was so slow with like treading carefully because i didn't understand the traffic and come on in singapore it's easier like everything is like there but here the roads were like you don't follow the lines, you know, nah. you kind of go by anticipation, you kind of like estimate, you know. So well, I, in Singapore, I was you drive panicking. on the left, right? Whereas here we drive it's the in the same shade. Side. No, no, it's on the same well, side. Well, here we drive in the shade. <laughs> well, well, it's on yeah. the same side. Yeah, yeah. So it was okay, you yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. So then again, I got through it and um, two and a half months into my job, I was swept back by tsunami. So I went back home. And I chill out till I came back here again in 2008. Okay. Okay, so you had a little bit of a break. A little bit of a break. So what were you doing in Singapore before you came here? What was life like? Was, so were you working in sales at the time? Do you know what? I, this is a personal... No, you don't you do have to answer week. this. Can I ask how old you are? Mm, I'm going to be 50. 32. Shut Fuck up. off. Yeah. I, I've got good genes. You it's certainly Asian. do. They, they, they look very good on you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm Are you that really? Anyway. That's, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Holy I've survived. Well, look, I've no, survived no, 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 all this. Rebecca, not being funny, we're all going to be 50 soon. Yeah. But I mean, Are we going to have a challenge? Well, no, some of us are 50 Race? sooner than the Race? others. But when you say soon, I mean, when I say soon, I've got 14 years to go. When <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a long way. <laughs> so how you soon know, is soon? I mean, Soon is like uh, coming up. Oh wow, that's year end. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Jesus, girl, <laughs> whatever you've got, bottle it and sell it, I tell you. Ooh, yeah. you want some of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't you? Are you single? Uh, As yes. happens. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not available, I'm sorry. <laughs> and sorry, it, no match. And no apparently, <laughs> R Russell's just given me my age limitations. Yeah. And you, you, you are over the age of 27, which apparently I'm allowed to um, go yeah, for. That's true. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. You do the young ones? Well, no, I haven't done the young ones yet. <laughs> Well, oh. uh, you know, in the past, I'm no, no, that <laughs> makes me feel. No, that comes out. What's wrong. my problem? Yeah. Uh, what shoes do you have? Single. Well, how about we let's talk about no, you no, no, now? No, 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 apparently, let's you're the one with the problem. <laughs> let us not go down that particular <laughs> rabbit hole. Let's keep this on you. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, right. All about me. So, born let's and about born me. and brought up in Singapore. Yeah. To Singaporean parents or? Yeah, Singaporean okay. parents. How? Because Russell, you know more about that. I mean, you touch okay. on Singapore well, yeah, no, than sorry, I do. So, so. Okay, so you're a little bit older than me. Yeah. Not very much. But a lot. Um, so yeah. So when were you sort of seventy-two? So yeah. Okay. So um, 
because I went to school in Singapore as well. I think we've talked about this before. Yeah. Yeah. Briefly. Yeah, briefly. So, um, but what was it like, sort of growing up in in Singapore? Because my experience of Singapore is. Tell me your experience. Uh, uh, okay. Well, mine's not mine's the easy one. I ab- when I went to Singapore the first time for school, I absolutely hated it. And I was coming from Hong Kong in the 80s. So it was 1990 we moved to, to Singapore. And I went from Hong Kong, which was vibrant. It was bustling. It was just alive. It was kicking. It was do what you want. It was rebellious. To going to Singapore, which was strict. It was controlled. It was straight lines. It was medicinal. It was... And I just really reacted badly to that. On the flip side, I love going to Singapore now. <laughs> I really... I mean, I've got just a lot because of... Because it's different from here. Well, A, that it's, yeah, I like some, you know, a little bit of normality and a little more uh, sort of control. I've got a lot of old school friends that still live there, and I really enjoy, it's just, things are so easy and sensible and, and logical in Singapore. And they, when, when Singaporeans do stuff, they, they do it right. Um, I mean, we're always lamenting here, like the road projects and construction. Singapore put up great big and monstrous buildings, but they look amazing, and they've, uh, the green and the trees are everywhere and it's just it, everything looks fabulous so i enjoy it now but obviously i you know i didn't grow up there so i just what was the experience like was there more of a transition i you know like for me it's probably a little bit different because i grew up with my brothers and sisters that are quite outgoing athletic and we're always out every sunday if we're not barbecuing somewhere we're out in my brother's stupid dinghy that you yeah. know like basically just sing right in the middle of nowhere and yeah. we have to scoop water out but that was all this adventure like we'll go snorkeling so growing up was kind of fun for me because we always led quite an outdoor life and my brother um he kind of ran like an outdoor canoeing, windsurfing um, facility out oh. in Sentosa before all this thing changed. Yeah, yeah. So every weekend I was working for him for oh, like wow. $4 an hour. It wasn't that bad. I mean, you yeah, know, yeah. I got some pocket money. Sure. And then like when I was not working for him, I would go work in a marina for like $50 a day, you know, mm-hmm. like $50 was like 1,600 baht or yeah. so. Yeah. For a whole day, it was just quite fun. I mean, for me, it was just not so much the money, but more the experience and the fun that I get out of it, rather right. than just sitting and not doing anything. You know? And which schools were you at? I went to a Bukit Panjang Government High. It was like okay. a government school, which I regretted because it was so far away from home. I don't even know why, because I had like a tuition teacher that was like from that school. Mm-hmm. And she said, this is a very good school and you should go there. And I didn't know, like you just listen to your teacher. Like you're yeah. taught to listen and just obey what you're taught to do. Like if people say this is the best, then you just do it. I'm thinking like, what the hell am I doing? I have to take like two, but took me an hour and a half both ways just to go to school yeah. and come back i'm thinking yeah, why am i wasting all this time but then it was too late i mean once you know. you're in you're in <laughs> and and in singapore you cannot say oh you know like i take a break like you know no yeah. because you know if you don't proceed it it would seem that you have not satisfied you know the quota that's expected of you so yeah you just proceeded with that and what so going through sort of the later school what was your f- sort of fo- profession what was your focus what was your idea of what i what i want to get into uh, I have always enjoyed um, talking to people. So I, at, a, at quite a young age, I knew that sales and being around people was what that I could be very good at. Okay. And in my head, like I, I was reading like a lot of stuff about how to close sales and like the stuff you do, you have to learn how to do the proper handshake with a bit of a squeeze, you know, <laughs> when you walk upright, wherever, you know, like all this stuff, like you, when you read this stuff, you say, oh, fuck, so cheesy, you know, these days when you look at all these self-help books that people are reading, but I don't think this is part of self-help anymore, you know, but then at that point, so I was kind of quite conscious that was what I would be good at doing. And so, and you... I mean, obviously, we'll come on to what you're doing now, but what was the, like your first thing out of school? What was your working-wise? What, I, what got you on a I had a diploma first in building construction. So like I wanted to do that because I wanted to understand how buildings were built. Mm-hmm. So that was also one of my little interests. So I uh, went into, to, I picked up a diploma in building and building management, right? So when I got up, my first job was as a waterproofing specialist which I knew nothing about, but I had to read Sorry, a lot. A waterproofing... Yeah, spe- yeah. Waterproof- so what you do waterproofing is... Waterproofing buildings, I'm assuming. Yeah, not- the roof, the roof. Yeah, okay. So you got to go up there, you got to study all the bitumen, the, I've the different... I've got a couple of small leaks that you can Yeah, like all the my- ceilings and stuff that you need to know, like the application and stuff like that. So I just spent my whole day climbing up rooftop. Wow. 
That's the uh, second no, thing I wasn't know, expecting excess, today. You know the excess uh, staircase that goes yeah. up to the rooftop? That was what I did for a year. <laughs> wow. That was fun. I bet it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so when, so you went through Singapore and you was doing, so was that your, that's your first job was doing the uh, That real, was like my first, first real job. job. Yeah. And, and at this stage, did you have any inclination that you wanted to travel? Uh, I have always had the, you know, in my mind, because in that cause of work. So wait, the thing is that my next job that went after that, I was selling machineries. Okay. Excavation and piling machineries. Proper, that, proper diggers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. they, no, no, proper piling. Yeah, baby. Yeah, 40 meters. Woohoo, all the way down. <laughs> For those who are watching the podcast. And laying yeah. black pipes. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca's demonstrating what a pile driver does. <laughs> yeah. Which How you looks get like it in. something completely different to me. But so anyway. then again, I got to meet um, uh, a lot of people that were traveling from all over the world because I need to host them and I need to talk to them and I need to correspond with them and, and kind of host them when they're here because we are like the the regional representative of all their products from Holland, from America, from UK, from Italy and everywhere else. Then I realized that, hey, I mean, I met all these people. Like, I've never thought of going there on my own. But when I was young, I actually traveled, but always with my family. But mm. we always go like Asia, places like that. You know, we never really got, you know, across the continent. So in my head, I did want to travel, you know, so. And did you... Did your parents take you on holiday different places or? Yeah, every year I go like two, three holidays. Where like would you I go? I even go on a cruise. I don't know. Like one of those places I'm thinking now, like I went to Lake Toba. It's like a, now that I realize it's like a crate of the volcano. And I was thinking like, why didn't I <laughs> pick up some shit, you know? Because like, now I'm interested. Like one of the things I want to do is to go visit a volcano somewhere. But then with the New Zealand, that white eye, whatever, yeah, yeah, white yeah. Maybe and not that, that one. But I think if you're careful, like, you know, to like a proper guided place, maybe it's quite good. Like, I one of those things that I like to do. Volcanologist, that's what you should have studied? Yeah, it could be. I, I've been to, to the it. big island, though, in Hawaii. I wasn't talking about Star Trek. All right. <laughs> Long live and prosper and all that. <laughs> <laughs> joke, Russ. Yeah. Um, so what did you do after selling diggers? I like the diggers. After bit. selling diggers, I thought, okay, so I've done a little bit about building. I kind of like it and I kind of don't like it because it's a little bit rough and you can't dress up and you're always in denims and you're always talking to God. Like, <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry. Like, hang on a minute. Yeah, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Have you ever seen Rebecca dress up? No. I've never seen you dress up. So all of a sudden... Would you like down, to take yes. me yes. out? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on. We've been interrupted. It's oh. all right. Come in, mate. He wants two more oh, of those. Yes. Yeah. Where are they? Hang on one sec. I'll be back. You guys carry on. Okay, be right back. BRB. Russell's just been dragged off on from K9 Point Academy. <laughs> he's gone to fix spotlights. I don't know where he's gone. <laughs> he's gone to pick up so stuff. So you were... Hold on. So we've gone from diggers to then you wanted to dress up. And yep. we were just mentioning you've ne so I've never seen you, I've never so seen you dress again, up. So then again, what I did was um, I, uh, I found a job. Uh, that I actually applied for a job that was working for a golf resort in Malaysia. Oh, okay. Doing S sales? Selling, yeah, membership sales and stuff like that. So I got kind of quite good at it and make a little bit of money. So you moved from Singapore? No, I didn't move. I was oh. always based in Singapore, but the property was in Malaysia. It was one of the biggest in, in Asia at that point. So how were you doing that from Singapore? So you were selling membership? just drive. I mean, it's just across the causeway. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I so didn't have the now, now you're talking to someone who has no idea. <laughs> I thought you can get from Singapore to Malaysia by driving. Yeah, just past the. That causeway. tells you how bad my it's geography is. It's just like is. a Sarasin bridge. Oh, right? really? Yeah, a little bit longer, but not much. I did not know that. Yeah, but you have to go through the the passport customs. control yeah, stuff. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every day you go through passport control. To I didn't really have to because I was working in the same office and I only have to go there like maybe twice or three times a week, just so that when I have like a club tour that I'm taking people up there to show them the property, have lunch, and then we'll take a. And that was buying golf membership. Yep. So it was just so you buy the membership and then you go and play whenever you. Were you a golfer at the time? Uh, yeah, I I tried playing golf there. Actually. Tried? Yeah, I I wasn't that bad. Are you still golfing? Uh, because it's too expensive. Yeah, I have really my golf expensive. Set, yeah, because yeah. it's not worth the while go cut somebody's grass and then you mess up your whole day. You get moody, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> you're just because you you're losing all your balls and stuff. It's not. Did really you take that. it that seriously? 
Uh, I did, because I was going driving range like every week. At that point, also, I had a boyfriend that was also a golfer. So every weekend, I was golfing. Okay. Uh-huh. I got I'm not lesbian, you know. I didn't, well. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw so you know. That, that was going to be the next question. <laughs> Rebecca, are you a lesbian? Uh, no, not okay. yet. Not but yet. No, 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 not yet. I, not I yet. didn't say no, because I enjoy women's company, so, you know. I See, I consider myself a lesbian. I'm I very know. happy. I know. Very and you happy like a l- as many. I like a little bit of lesbian. <laughs> Just like I tell people I'm gay, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Gay's right. So, no, I think going back to golf, golf's super expensive here. Because mm-hmm. we when I first got to Phuket, we were playing every Thursday at Lock Palm right. when you'd get the resident rate. And it was, it was almost, it was cheap then. It was like 1,500 baht for the whole round. Right. But now you're paying like five, six thousand baht. It's crazy. That's excluding having to pay your caddies. Your yeah. Fees. Well, it depends what you do with them afterwards, I guess. Yeah. Uh, no, no, but you have <laughs> oh. to pay it like the tip, right? All right. Not, not like, the. Oh, like not for the extra. No, no, no. Like you have to pay like five hundred baht at least for eighteen hole, like three hundred for nine, right? So. It's bonkers. It is bonkers yeah. price. So you started doing golf memberships. Yep. And then carried on doing that, making some money, making good money. Uh, yeah, and that's when I could actually, you know, just look at the map and say, where do you want to go? I could just go on my own without anybody helping me, financing me, whichever way. But that time you had your boyfriend? Uh, yeah. Quite serious? Yeah, but I can, I'm still allowed to travel, no? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm not, it's not jail no, sentence, is you it? you must not travel. <laughs> because the way you say, like, uh, are you allowed to? Yes. I don't I, know how I, it works. I have legs <laughs> <laughs> to walk. <laughs> So then what year was you doing this? I'm just trying to build up to when you then first came to Phuket. I think it was in 1997. Okay, so it was a few years about... Yeah. So what then were you doing? So what you... You came to Phuket in 2004, just before, and then left. But for that first... Why did you come to Phuket? I know it was for the job. But were you looking to come overseas? Were you looking to work overseas not or really, not? Because it was somebody that I knew. Because you know, like um, when I was working in Malaysia, uh, the property that we were working in, and after that, I was hired to also manage the place. Was a place where we have a complete golf se- uh, resort set up. That okay. We have the golf course. You have the um, hotel, like one of the biggest, like three hundred and thirteen rooms. You know, it was like a big five star outfit. So. Um, this person that I knew of that also worked for the hotel has actually bumped. I mean, we kind of bumped into each other in Bangkok. Then he said, hey, you know what you're doing? I said, um, I'm kind of like looking for something to do. It was just one of those things you walk past a mall and then you hear somebody's voice that is so familiar. And then you look, you know, you kind of like take a second look. It's like, hey, what you're doing here? You know, it's that kind of conversation. And then we exchanged number. And then that was kind of like it was part of his project that was in Phuket that he kind of like say, hey, why don't you come and work for the owners here? You know, were you looking to go? Obviously, it was just one of those things. Just no, happened, huh? I, I never really look for nothing. You know, it's just one of those things that say, hey, and, and I'm always quite open to new challenges because I think people are playing in your path to show you something different that you never thought you could so I'm always the kind of person that say yes to everything but with a little bit of like reservation but like just go find out what it is because to me it doesn't matter if I don't like it I just buy myself a ticket to come home sure. so I'm not like kind of like strapped to anything right and were you uh, with anybody at the time or were you single at the time uh, I was there with my boyfriend so actually yeah technically I wasn't single I was never single with a single <laughs> but how did he feel then? When, so if you wanted to, uh, and so I've got two questions. So how did he feel when you said, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to go to Phuket. And he said, yes, go, because then he can go date somebody exactly. else. <laughs> that was the trick, right? So he like, was having a little The supportive party. boyfriend, yeah, 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 yeah. but you know, he's up to some shit, but then it's okay. That's what men That's like. That's the past, yeah. And have you been to Phuket beforehand or never? Uh, I have been here once like a two three day two night kind of holiday staying in Patong. so nice. i didn't think much of it because i, I didn't know where to go sure like everybody you know tell you like go to Patong because like you get the shopping you get the beach you get the party and stuff like that Table so tennis, i mean naturally but i didn't pong. think much of it i didn't think i was gonna like it but when i first got here uh, because i had my boyfriend then i was saying that oh could i do like two weeks in phuket and you know go home you know, to Singapore for a week and then come back. So I was like, I was trying to do like seven days a week, walk with uh, work, working without break, and then take my days off back in Singapore like for four or five days. 
and come okay. back. So that was... Oh, Russell's welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks Kay- for coming back. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm back. Uh, <laughs> so it's been a great podcast. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See you next week. Yeah. So 2004, then obviously the, the devastating tsunami then hit. So you then went back to Singapore yeah. because obviously there was no work here at uh, the time. It wasn't that there was no work. It's just that I feel, uh, you know, this is a bad sign. You know how it is when things happen. Things happen and then, and then other things happen. Maybe it's a sign that I should go home. Oh, you, like, is this like a Feng Shui Chinese kind of spiritual thing? No, that you no, have, no, nothing, or? nothing. It was just then I was at my boyfriend's like, maybe that was a sign that I have to go back home. You, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. I nearly just died. Maybe I should not be here. Yeah, you right. know, like, you know, like, honestly, I came back on. So it happened on the Sunday, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> I think so, yeah. 2004. And I was actually due back on that day to come back to Phuket. Oh, wow. Okay. On some, because I have to work on Monday. So I was supposed to fly back in the morning at 9 o'clock. And then I got a phone call, you know, like somebody I knew here said, oh, are you at the airport? I said, yes, I'm at the airport. Because <laughs> I was at Changi Airport. He said, there's a lot of water. I said, what water? I'm <laughs> in Changi Airport. Like I see a lot of people, but not water. He said, you're not at Phuket Airport. I said, no. I'm back and say, I'm going back to Phuket. He said, oh, you know, like all the airports are shut. You can't come back. But then I was already at the airport. So actually I changed my flight to fly into Bangkok. And then I stayed in Bangkok for like a day before coming back to Phuket. And then I was quite curious and you drove everywhere to see how devastating it is. And you, you remember that image where at Hot Rock Cafe, there was this car that was sticking out of Hot Rock Cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went there just to go see that. I mean, <laughs> wow! It's like, you know, you just have to see it. I mean, no, you saw I, it on news. I, I you know, you do, especially if you're in that place. I mean, yeah, you, you do want to go and look. Yeah, at so I like kind of like took a day just to drive everywhere just to see how devastating it is. But at that point, I didn't know anybody because I was just like a newbie here. Right. So I didn't feel, you know, you feel it, but you're not into you it. You had no you're attachment. Not connected to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you had no, no attachment to it, so you totally. didn't know. You know, like yeah. people were helping. I'm thinking like I could help, but what am I? Where am I gonna go? I don't yeah. even know where to drive to. You know. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. no it, it's true. I mean, I remember there was a few years back when it was a 10-year anniversary. People were really having conversations about it and they were really getting into it and they asked me what I, my views. I was like, I, I, sad. I, I don't know. I didn't even yeah. know it had happened because... You weren't here yet? No, I didn't get here till you 2007. But uh, I didn't even know about the... I don't think I even knew that Thailand had been hit by the tsunami. Right. Apart from until I got here, then obviously I knew of it. Right, but right. Where I, wherever I was in 2004, mm-hmm. God knows which country I was in at that time, I'd turkey or greece yeah. i'd imagine mm. it wasn't news there you right, know we right. would li- we were working on the beach we were working in sailing so we didn't hear about this disaster yeah and so also I'd because you have no friends or whatnot that's involved nothing in yeah, yeah like if you've got you no don't connection have any to attachment it. yeah yeah it's like so a hurricane in florida or whatever yeah. <laughs> so then what brought you back in 2008 so i was uh, i came back to work for blue canyon oh ah. ah, do you play golf yeah, at we that th- point, Russell, I Russell, we did this about 20 minutes what ago. What have you... Sorry, where, where have I been? She's I've been on yeah. site. <laughs> she played golf. She's gay. I'm a lesbian. Yeah. She had a We have perfect match made in yeah. heaven, Jay. Exactly. <laughs> this is what happened when you was out. <laughs> we should have a big party. I, sh- I should leave more often. Yeah, go <laughs> put spotlights Russell, up or something. you are invited. Excellent. With Whatever, em. whatever it's to, <laughs> I'm in. Emily's coming. So, yeah. So we need Be- on our team. Bexter does play golf. Doesn't play so much anymore because it's expensive. Do, 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 you could just go and listen again and catch <laughs> Actually, up. Actually, I'll tell you what, yeah, I can catch up on the and podcast. And then come back and ask a question. <laughs> if I ask a question and you've already talked about it, just say that. So what were you doing at the lovely Blue Canyon? I golf? was working... Yeah, I did. <laughs> Are you gay? <laughs> <laughs> I can't be gay. I can't, be gay. I, can't do, I can't do them all. I don't discriminate, sir. <laughs> yeah. Friendly. So <laughs> rainbow friendly. <Yeah. laughs> we're all rainbow friendly. Um... <laughs> my god I was thinking about rainbows and friendlies um, so what were you doing at Blue Canyon so um, Blue Canyon I was hired to be the director of revenue so what, I, does, what does that mean so basically you just look at where Money. else like a business development in a way you okay. know, and also to look at all the different departments like how they're doing and stuff like that and was that, that the time in two, so that was 2008 that's when Blue Canyon was actually nice uh, yeah, Sorry. before it was under siege. Yeah. Well, I just, and I was there, mind you. I, I just think for me, and I love, when I first went to Blue Canyon, I was over, overwhelmed with how beautiful yeah. this golf course. To me, it was, I mean, I've seen my, I'm not a big golfer, and I've seen some golf courses and public golf courses and local golf courses where I grew up. But this was 
unbelievable. Like this huge, beautiful clubhouse. The drive into it, yeah, the, yeah. everything about the whole the thing. The grandeur. Yeah, yeah, the immense yeah. of it. it was like, and then even just driving up and dropping your clubs off. Walking up the big stairs to yeah. get in. It was just like, wow, this place is amazing. Never been. Have it's you not? It was stunning. It's one of the top stunning. 50 best golf courses yeah, it, in the world. Absolutely. Yeah. And you see all the things on the wall. It was so, you know, it's like you're watching TV, the, the, one of the big golf events. You know, you're walking into this grandeur of event, as you said. Yeah. And now the I went days. back recently and it's like, <laughs> uh, I, don't, I haven't been back in there. It's, it's sad to me that it's just kind of, uh, and I don't want to diss it just in case I want to sponsor the show, which they can do. No problem at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, but uh, it just that. It feels <laughs> that it's been... Like, like it down. hasn't been looked after. Yeah. It feels like it's just kind of like my parents, it's almost like your parents are still living there, but they've got older, so they're not as cleaning as much as they used to. They're not, <laughs> you know, they're not putting yeah. the wallpaper up. They're not cleaning as, as well as they used. That's what it feels like to me. Um, but going back but, to... But I think a lot of the golf courses go through this kind of phase, you know, because like, like just speaking from experience now, just to share a little bit of information, like when you are in the membership department, you bring in shitloads of money. <laughs> But usually all this money are kind of like funded up to do something else. Yeah. And very little is left behind for the operation. So the operation money is always from subscription fees and stuff like that, right? Or even like when you pay your, your, your dues, sometimes it may not be funded into upkeeping and maintenance right. of the whole place. So that's just, just, just how it is for most of the golf courses, yeah. you know? Because you know, like the owners or whoever managing it, they want to see the money. Yeah. And then they may have to pay loans, they may want to use it to fund other projects and mm. stuff like that. So they always think that, oh, you know, the number of members that with all the subscription fees that they pay should be able to kind of like manage the the management mm. the monthly maintenance course of the whole place but it doesn't always turn out like that so that's one of those problems and that that's why you see a lot of places are run down like that and then there's no money to 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 manage what were you shooting at the time that's a golf term yeah uh, <coughs> i was maybe the best of plate is probably 14 ah that's 14 it's better than me yeah yeah better than 15 <laughs> Yes. yes, not so as good as thirteen. No. Yeah, no, exactly, no. <laughs> exactly. So, how long were you at Blue Canyon for? Uh, I was there till twenty twelve. Oh wow! Okay, twenty third, twelve. Yeah, twenty twelve. Yeah. And mm. then, does that bring us up to Anthem? Yeah. Okay, so let's go to Anthem because now I've noticed that Anthem is no longer, which is a very yeah. sad. We'll get on to that. So. How did you get involved in the uh, Anthem Wake Park? So when I was working here in the golf course, as it is, I'm like, I don't like to do things that are routine. So I was playing golf and I find that I'm such a loser because like Monday to Sunday, I'm just golfing and I never left because you kind of stay in the resort because I, I didn't know a lot of people. So I decided that I should venture out, go do something that's different. <laughs> so that's how I was driving. And I also needed to do something that I could do on my own. Like not play sports where you need to go date somebody to go and play, you know. So doing wakeboarding was kind of fun because you could just show up. So I kind of like that vibe about the the sports itself, and also the vibe, you know, that is around this wakeboarding scene, right? So um, when I do you know what I'm going to stop you. First of all, wakeboarding you do need other people if you have a boat. But no, it no, was no. just the cable you don't. This is cable, but yeah. the reason you said you like the vibe around it, what she really meant to say was, I love the guys yeah. in six packs in their little shorts going wakeboarding. Uh, that's what you liked. That's not a bad thing to like too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the bonus. But I you know, don't always see. You, you mentioned that your brother had, uh, was doing water sports. Had you done wakeboarding and water skiing or anything no, like that beforehand? No, never, 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 never. I kind of like took it up when I was here. Okay, Yeah, that's so. cool. Yeah. Just something to learn, something new to learn, right? So. And were you part of the, the anthem at the very, very start? Yeah. Because I remember going there when it first, where well, you had to climb down the mud. Yeah, the, the yeah. that was when down. we first started. We had to yeah. slide down the mud yeah. to get to the thing. Yep, yep. So, wow. And then it came, I mean, how long were you there for? Uh, oh. Since the beginning. Cause so we were the Because we were the founders. So we actually kind of like looked for money to finance the whole place and then to build the place as well. So um, it took us six months to um, get it. What happened? I can, can you go tell into you, it? I cannot tell you the real story because you'll tell us day, a fake story. The day that I leave, and I know I'm never going to leave in Thailand anymore, I will tell you right, what okay. happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but, now but I sad enough to say, Anthem is no more. Uh, yeah, we kind of closed the business. Yeah. We had to. Is the climbing still there? 
Yeah, climbing is still there. And what about the silk, the the cycling? Was that still part of the whole thing or not? Was it that was not just a fun thing. Like oh, okay. that, yeah, yeah. It was just part of. Yeah, it, it could be there if somebody mm. wanted to do lessons. So where's all the equipment then? What is equipment? it still uh, the the wakeboard, the wakeboard stuff? Part. Is it still there or or is this? Are you good, uh, you're it might have been so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm getting the <laughs> yeah. change tactic. We're getting into murky waters here. Uh, I don't mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there's no more water there. Did <laughs> you not see? No, I've been afraid. Oh actually. my god! All it's the all been pumped has, out. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Right. Now, yeah. Oh yeah. I think it's like at least more than six meters. Wow. Below whatever it was. But it's the same everywhere here. It's like the water behind Blue Tree and all of that. It's just, it's all gone, pumping everything out. So where, uh, where? So what are you doing now? No, I I was actually getting ready to go home. Before COVID, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so one because my work permit finishes last year in December, right? Right. So I went away. And uh, I needed to come back and sort out things. And I still had my dog and whatnot that I couldn't leave Tintin behind. So I was kind of ready to go back to Singapore. I was just chilling out, like, you know, hanging out with my friends and stuff like that. And then COVID happened. I'm such, damn, I still haven't figured out what to do with my <laughs> dog, you know? Like, should I put her up adoption or whatnot? You know, but I didn't want to do that. You this know? is your paddleboarding dog. Yeah. yeah. How old yeah. is she? She is now, she's going to be eight in June. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can get it to Singapore, but it's just... No, it's just Singapore is not really a nice place for yeah. her because most people are not pet friendly. And like mm, the place that I have in Singapore, it's like it's in a complex. You know? Yeah, it, you've, it's a condo, you have a swimming pool and whatnot. But it's not like now you just let her out. She can go pee and pee. Yeah. You basically have to take her down, you know, key card access, get out of the metal gate yeah. and then go walk her. So it's, a, it's not impossible, but I just want to find out what is the best for her. I've, I've noticed over the last few years when I've been going back to Singapore right. it's becoming a lot more dog friendly there are a lot more people out with dogs and there's more places that you can go I have noticed that but you are right it's very much at the other end of the extreme compared to the lifestyle that we have for them here because again most of it I mean you're going to be in an apartment you're going to be a few stories up it is all about you know but not just that like just trying to get your dog out like now I could take my car you know and, and drive just, her to the beach or yeah, drive absolutely. but in Singapore I mean if you don't have your own car and whatnot, it's impossible like the grab drivers may or may not you kind of have yeah, to yeah. find the pet friendly ones correct you know? yeah. it's just a huge hassle so are you still thinking after this the airports open up are you going to head back to Singapore are you still so, I'm in an R in like I said everything happened for a reason the yeah. day before the lockdown I got a phone call so I can't tell you what it is oh. now. But oh. that means you're staying or going? I might be staying. I don't know. Okay. I mean, oh. there's a love-hate relationship with Phuket. You know, right. every time I want to leave something, yeah. happens, you know, <laughs> so that might happen, but I don't know. Okay, yet. stay tuned. Yeah. Exclusive. Check out any time you yeah. leave. Check, check. <laughs> you can check out any time you want, but Same you can never leave. Same time next week. Um, <laughs> I want to touch on, on one thing before we get to your... Is that um, allowed? Huh? Is that allowed? I'm lovely to touch. Hashtag I me can, too. I can Ooh. touch Rebecca all I like. <laughs> I'm ready, Jay. <laughs> um, you have been extremely busy during the COVID oh, yes. stuff, doing a load, a load of stuff for charity. Yep. Now, we don't like to bang on about charity and how much work that Russell and I do for charity because <laughs> we do do a lot of work for In your charity. Heart. <laughs> um, and we don't like to discuss it, you know, in no. on the public forum of how right, much work right. we do do for charity. <laughs> I mean, it's, I just, it's too much to go on about, really. <laughs> I mean, if we did Long want to talk about it, we'd probably have to do a whole podcast about charity, of what we do for charity. We to, we do I, think we have, I think we have to do a podcast for each. <laughs> oh, just for each I mean, event that we've done. It just I mean, it just goes on too much, I think, the amount of work we do do for charity. Which is why I think we I should I mean, when you go to charity in the dictionary, it says Russell and Jay. Sometimes it says picture. Jay and Russell, depending on, you know. Which charity. <laughs> so, obviously, we do a lot of work for charity, right. um, Bexter. Um, you so thanks for joining the pod. Yeah. Good. Um. <laughs> but no, one of, uh, one of the things I did want to say was, was well done for the amount Thank of work you. you actually do doing. Just can you just summarize what you've been doing, if you may? Um, how, it's question, <laughs> it? <laughs> how it started was that when all this thing started, I feel like because I have a platform and I thought was I could Was that the one that you stole from Anthem Wake Park? <laughs> no, no, that was too heavy. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I saw. Yeah, Russell stole uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, I saw it him already. Yeah. My plastic platform. Oh no, uh, wait. HDPE is HDPE, not plastic. Yeah, yeah. It's not just any plastic. Okay, it's yeah. very durable. Plastic's good. Don't knock plastic. So what I felt was that I should do something about it. Because, you know, there's always little things that you can do. But also, I kind of feel, having lived here for so long, I also feel a little bit, 
I have some compassion in me. I'm not such a hard woman. <laughs> <laughs> There's a softness in me yeah. inside, you know. So I decided that I could do something, but I never thought what it was going to be. Just doing little stuff, you know. And and how I started the Soul Food program was that I noticed people were giving a lot of things away, which is good, like the rice. <laughs> but I said I didn't have that kind of budget. If I were to go that route and then like everything costs like three four five hundred baht i don't know how much i'm gonna raise maybe i raise a thousand baht and mm. then what i'm gonna get two bag of yeah like groceries like what am i doing it's not impactful so i decided that i should give food because then it's one less meal for people to think about and it's quite nice i don't think people are at the stage whereby they completely have no food agreed but more so to show people that we see what you're going through just we're here to help. Hi, you know how you're doing and stuff like that. Just to give people some comfort that somebody actually knows what you're going through. Mm. They help you as much as you can and they help within their own ability. So that was what I was trying to do. So that's, you know, the Soul Food program that came out. So I was also looking for someone to help me prepare food and stuff like that. So I end up um, getting Pinky from Gallery, which yep. is like a good friend. I've always been mm -hmm. there to drink coffee. Yeah, and just so, asked, sorry, that's uh, Gallery Cafe. Uh, with Pinky, I, yeah. just to give them a shout out because they've right. been doing a lot of work with you as well. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you do want to go to a, ca she's got like four or five cafes on the yeah, island, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah, bless her. Exactly. So, um, so because I spoke to her and I, I asked her if she, you know, would be able to help me because, and she said, yeah, why not? Because the staff in there, I mean, it's kind of like give them something to do as well. So she was quite happy to participate. So then we said, okay, we, we kind of like strike a deal and then like how much I have to pay her from the money that was raised and stuff like that. So um, so that's how it started. And then um, Swai uh, Kitchen Anoy also said that he would love to. I mean, he spoke Chef and said, Noy. Hey. Yeah, so he also came on board. So that's cool. how we put the two uh, restaurants together. What? And we also felt that it was a good way for the restaurant to have some exposure as sure. well, you know, yeah, that absolutely. they're part so, of the program. So, uh, yeah, that's Chef Noy from Sway Restaurant. Um, very good, nice guy. Handsome. Ooh. <laughs> Handsome guy. Ooh. And a great Are cook. Are you changing your mind already? Oh, I'm at the age, Bex, though, where I'm allowed to say men are handsome and gorgeous. Okay. Some men don't like it, but I'm, I'm in touch <laughs> with my feminine side. I'm Ooh. happy to give him... Look, it's been three years. <laughs> I need something. <laughs> <laughs> Anything. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, any holds a goal. Uh, <laughs> anyway, no, we talk about charity. We should we talk okay. about Okay. But no, so it, it's soul food. Uh, it's, that's the. Soul yeah, I kind of hashtag. You know, like these days, you gotta whatever you, gotta you have do. A hashtag. Yeah. Well, I think hashtag is good in a way, but you kind of have to be sensible with your hashtag. Like one of those things that I have problem with is people hash tagging like social distancing. You know, mm. hashtag COVID nineteen is like what for? Yeah. Like we need to be reminded of all these things yeah, that it's, it's like, not like we, we hate, don't know you what's know? going on. Yeah, yeah, so like stuff like that I, I don't agree about hashtagging, but I think hashtagging like good stuff, it, it's it's nicer, mm. you know. And also so food is like it keeps you warm, it warms the heart. <laughs> so like that is why the, the, it's the great. name came out, you know. And it's just it's still going on now, so yeah. people can still support it. Yeah, and, for sure. Um just before we get into your bucket list, how can people support it? I think uh, people can support in different ways. Like it is, we just launched a program with Blue Tree, the um, CSR, that part of the thing was to be able to channel funds to them. Because uh, I don't need a lot, because I'm just providing food. It's like 30 yeah. baht a meal, you know, and I strike a good deal now. So the thing with that, uh, with the gallery, is that now that their restaurants are open, I understand they couldn't support because they have a very small kitchen. So I find PO, that is by Chintali Kitchen, I don't know whether you've been there, uh, amazing food at two star prizes, and he's such a, such a nice guy. You know, like sometimes he would give me extra food just to give away without charging me extra money for it. <laughs> like I have a budget, like every day, sure. like how much to churn up. So so then again, um, so with, with with him, I would also just pick up meals every day and deliver them. So I could still go on with the program. It doesn't cost me a lot of money to provide like a hundred pack of food. You know, it's like 3,000 baht. So are you delivering yourself? Yeah, I do. Do you do chicken and fish as well? That's twice, and twice fish? in the same. Oh. No. <laughs> you mean... So together, just, no, 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 just, just, just ignore Jay. He's. <laughs> it's a great joke. It's a great joke. Yeah, apparently so. It's, oh. So if people want to get in touch, either to, I mean, basically you're looking more sort of fi for financial donations. Uh, yeah, in a yeah. way, for and sure. And if people want to get money to you, what's the best way? Um, I think I have actually spoken to a lot of people that have messaged me. I 
prefer that I don't take money in my name okay. just to keep things very professional. So I've actually approached Blue Tree under the CSR to collect the money on behalf okay. that we could use it because we don't know how much is going to come in. But I may not always need this money for yeah. soul food, but we could always support the community in other way, like the new platform that we have now that we would get like raw rice, oil and stuff that people yeah. could go and draw as and when they need. Because I find that, you know, when you give something to people, even though they don't need it, they're going to take it because you give it to them. Sure, but yeah. sometimes they don't need it. So why don't we just give it to people that really need it? They just come and draw the supplies. Yeah, you know, no, if you just go to the, sorry, to try, just go to the Blue Tree Facebook page and the, all the CSR stuff. And, and in all fairness, um, they are doing a great job. The CSR team, Kumpu and her team at, at Blue Tree have yep. done an amazing job. And they've just set up the little pantry now outside yep. where you can just go and you can help yourself to items if right. you need so, right. if you need to. Um, I'll be putting some plants, actually, because I've been looking at There's, Ooh, there's nice. all lots of products there, like mm. rice and cooking right. oil. But I'm actually going to put some, and it's something I've been working with my local community, is growing seedlings and then giving them to the local community. Right. Now, obviously, that's a long-term project, but it does mean that they can actually plant something and then they'll get some fruits and vegetables growing in their garden. Can um, I rope you in on something yeah. since you're into plant? Because, you know, like with all these campsites that I've been to, they have so much land, but it's just full of filth and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, imagine if they clear it out and have a garden. They could have their own food. Well, absolutely. Because yeah. some of the people, some of the camps actually do that. I've seen like one absolutely. of those camps. Yeah. And I think they should go in that direction rather than always asking for people to no, give No, I agree. Give, and I think it's, it's, it's trying to teach people to become self-sufficient. And look, it is a long-term project. It's not the short-term answer is, yeah, right. go and cook food for them, give them food. But the... Yeah. the the medium to long term is also is to teach them just go and plant something because yeah, that exactly. papaya tree will grow and you will always get mm. papayas right. Exactly. The passion and these things grow so quickly in this uh, uh, in this climate, especially now with rainy season coming. Yeah. So yeah. One of the key things that I think you can do is it, look if you if you don't want to grow plants from seeds, which is very difficult mm -hmm. uh, for some people, just go to the local nursery and go and buy it already half grown papaya and just take it to one of these pantries, mm. leave it there. Someone's going to grab it and go and plant it in their thing. Lots of it's just a different option, you know. It's <laughs> very I can give them to them for free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, look, if you need stuff like that, uh, so it's Soul Food. You can go and search that or go to Blue Tree uh, yeah. Facebook page. So, uh, we are organizing a um, account dedicated to the CSR program. Cool. So, this is what we kind of have agreed with Blue Tree that not to mix up the account with their sure. own current business account. So, to set up a separate account because the long term about one of those things that that we discussed was also the fact that because uh, CSR is so much a DNA in what Blue Tree is striving to do for the community, then it's not just this project. There's so many things that has to be done to help the community. Just educating the kids how to defend themselves, how to say no. Like like I was looking at all this camp, there were all these young girls that were living among all these men. I mean, I'm not saying all men are bad, but... A majority know, are. Yeah. But then the girl need to be smart as well sure. about their body and stuff Absolutely. like that. So I think it's an education that can be thought and someone could teach them. Well, I think the so positiveness from this, this whole... And, and Russell and I have touched on very many, uh, many different positiveness that have come from this whole virus thing is the community is becoming much more closer mm. um, and we are seeing things that we didn't see before and people from all walks of life are starting to be much more friendly right, to each other right. and just fingers crossed it, it carries on we're going to have to move on um, right. so just keep um, well done for all the work Thank you're doing you. by the way for that um, bucket list I've yeah. jumped in bucket list so I've, I've got a feeling this could be a good one but go on Rebecca tell us what are the things that are on your bucket I list I think one of those things I really want and you can, to do if you want you can mention what you said on the phone the other day Oh, with a threesome with two yeah. white dudes? Yeah. No, you know what I told Russell? Is that does it count if you've done it, but you want to do it again? Yeah. Is this still in a bucket list? <laughs> can you can it still qualify as a bucket list? Maybe I will compromise one white, one black. Yeah. <laughs> oh, two blacks. Okay, damn it. Two blacks then. <laughs> sorry. I can't say black, damn I, it. I, Shit, sorry. I did say this might be a good one. You've got nowhere to go with that, don't you? I don't know to go with that yeah. <laughs> I know. she knows where to go with that yeah I bet you do <laughs> no, right. but, but that's more for entertainment but uh, yeah. one of those things that I really want to do is to go skydiving okay yeah. I nice. think it's a lot of adrenaline it's so fun yeah I'll be up for that yeah that's been not, not, not together, okay? No. <laughs> not at the same time. Are you I putting the shoot? I thought you were putting the shoot. <laughs> oh, hold on. So you want to have a threesome with two white guys and go skydiving. Why don't you put it all together? 
Okay, three Why guys not? then. Let's do it. That's that's a whole. <laughs> I'm game. <laughs> that's a whole new mile high club. That is. In all fairness, the skydiving does come up a lot. We have a yeah. lot of people wanting to do mm. skydiving. Is because there anything it's else? adrenaline rush. Is there anything else on your on your bucket list? There's so many things, you know. I want to learn well, come how on, to re- do real crossing and s- all this fun stuff. That I kind of like in my head, I imagine I'm so adventurous, <laughs> but I've never got on to doing it. Because, you know, there's so many other things to do. And there's so much to learn, you know, so. Cool, man. Yeah. All right. Super. Well, there we go. I think we're. Um, Run out of Unless time. you have any more questions for the lovely Rebecca? Or are you going to you're gonna show her? Do you want my number? I've got your number. I've got your oh number. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Do you want to put it? Oh, do you want to <laughs> tell the whole world? Well, <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, I just want you to. <laughs> <laughs> we will put the links in the description to the soul food. And, and your phone number. And, and Rebecca's <laughs> phone number. And if you are two white guys that are looking for a beautiful Singaporean lady. <laughs> or a cafe latte. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> on that note, <laughs> uh, Rebecca, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much. It was so lovely having it's been you. Fab. Too. Russell, thank you. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. And we'll talk to you soon. Catch you soon. And kisses. You. Bye. That was Rebecca. It's a great podcast. <laughs> oh, I'm peaking. Um, for a change. No, I know. Let me turn it down. Now, first of all, we should explain that we recorded with Rebecca on the Friday, and today is Sunday, and we're at Russell's house. Back at the original studio. Back at where it all started. Where it all, where it all started. Um, and Rebecca was amazing. She was she, fun. She's completely <laughs> nuts. I mean, she's not on this planet. She's not on this planet, is she? No. Well, uh, to be fair, given the current state of things, it's probably not a bad idea. No, but she's doing um, a great job. <laughs> No, she is doing a great job. The old charity stuff. I'm trying to have a sip of coffee and yeah, talk yeah, at the same time. Co- drink, drink, and, mm. drink and talk at the same time. No, no. For what she is doing, it's great. Um, and to be fair, she was kind of, as she was saying, just ended up getting stuck here because of what's happening. Um, and then something obviously is happening and she's going to be stuck here. So there's light at the end of the tunnel for her. Well, indeed. But she, I mean, at the time, she didn't know that. That kind of came up later. But rather than just sitting down watching Netflix and twiddling her thumbs all day, decided to um, get involved, do something charitable, help people out. Charity, and mate. Charity, mate. And then on the back of that, yeah, uh, by the sounds of things, there's some um, things happening in the pipeline, shall we say. Secret. 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 Bloody secrets. And the, um, the the threesome we had at the end of the podcast was fantastic. Which was great. Terrific. Which she did... Sc- I don't... Well, no, I do get scared quite often by strong women. Um, but um, I, I felt that the look that she gave us, she actually really wanted... <laughs> To, to take us into her domain and be the... I, in fact, I've just come up with the title for the podcast. I, I don't, I'm not entirely sure I want to know. Well, she's Dominatrix, is it? she not? Well, that'll do. Fair enough. Rebecca the Dominatrix, probably not the right title for the podcast. Yeah. Anyway, she was lovely. I liked her. So, well done, Rebecca. Thank you very much. Um, like us on Facebook. Like, like us on... I, do you know what? I've just realised I've come around here an hour early. Yes. Because Russell and I are off to a... a Secret party. Oh, we can because they won't be listening because we finished and by also, the time. also, we can't invite you because it's happening now and you're not going to hear about this until Tuesday. That's right. So there's a secret party happening today on Sunday. A secret it's a surprise coronavirus. So we can, actually, we can say happy birthday, Steve. Or happy, happy birthday, birthday, Steve, because it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, the and Colonel. And we're giving it away because... And we are going to a party, but we are going to be social distancing at the party. We are. Um, I will especially be social <laughs> distancing at the party. Because you're going to drive off. Because that's what I do at social... Well, that's, sorry, that's what I do at parties is social distancing a lot. What are you drinking? Um, electrolyte. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, like us on Facebook. Like us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Go and check out our new website, which was designed by me and Wix. <laughs> I'm not like some people say, hey, I'm a website designer. Check me out. Pay me money to design your website. I just use Wix. Mentioning no names. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. That's life. <laughs> uh, right. Thanks, Russell. Oh. Cheers, buddy. Sorry. Who's next? But, who's next? Well, we've got two. I'm trying to... I want to show you who's next. I was going to send you a... a I was going to send you... You're going to send me something, I was going right? to send you a picture of who's next. Um, we're trying to get hold of DJ Russell. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. So we're going to try to do the Russell... I was listening to one of his um, mixes. streams. Of He's good, actually. Yeah, yeah. And did you hear Darren Fox I did sing indeed. it? Yeah, yeah. Which She's is the got first, some the lungs, first, eh? Yeah, and that's the first time I've heard her sing. And, and it's always different when you hear it live live on a stream versus when it's like recorded and, and done in the studio and all of that. But no, she was uh, live on, on the Facebook stream. She was brilliant. No, she was good. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm going to try to tap up Darren Fox because she is Foxy. We're looking at Russell, uh, the stain master. And then there's another, there's a there's a Thai freelance chef that I'm trying to get on as well, cool. okay. which I'll show you a picture of later. That's it. Okay. Groovy. Cheers, buddy. I'll see you at the party. 
Well, yeah, we're just going to stop this and then we're going to go to the party, are we? Yay! Great. <laughs> so excited about this party. Thanks, Russell. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye.